Yo, Winnebago, don't come walking over here with your weird floor plans. If you're tired of seeing all these bigger, heavier trailers that your mid-sized tow package pickup can't handle, stay tuned. I think you're going to like this one. Welcome to Bish's RV here in Coldwater, Michigan. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and this is the 1808 FBS Winnebago Micro Mini. And like I said, if you've got a bigger tow package SUV, if you've got a tow package mid-sized pickup, I think you're really going to like this one here. This is a fantastic couples or maybe solo camper here. Um, the uh, the RV is seven foot wide, so it fits that smaller truck size very nicely. It has a pseudo independent torsion axle and suspension system for better ride and handling. Goodyear Wrangler tires uh, so uh, that are lifted. So if you want to do a little bit of light duty off pavement camping, even if you have a bigger pickup, this may also be a fantastic option for you. We've got a factory standard 190 watt solar package to help keep the batteries topped off, make sure the power jack and the awning and all that stuff is running for you. Uh, we've got an enclosed underbelly that is forced air heated, has a radiant barrier layering to maximize effectiveness, and has holding tank heaters standard on this thing, which is pretty sweet, along with the tinted windows to help keep the look lose in the sunshine out of this thing. Um, it's got a, uh, a slide inside that can be either a dinette that we're seeing here today or a sofa with a bonus storage chest behind it. So we're looking at one version of this. There's also, if you'd like, I don't want a dinette. I wish this had a sofa. You can get that too. And we might have it in stock. This isn't the only way we order these. Uh, standard, this would have a 12 volt fridge. We're looking at the two way today. So keep in mind, uh, we might be able to customize this one a little bit more to your personal preferences or get it in the FLX Flex Edition uh, to expand on the solar and the, uh, the big lithium battery that's built into those with that 3000 watt inverter. Now the hiccup with this camper is everything that makes it great is also its greatest point of concern and liability. Like the smaller size means it has an east-west bed. Now we're going to dive into that more as we go. I've talked enough. If you appreciate the fair way that we show you the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get going. So here's what I want to do with this one. I want to get the deal breaker stuff out of the way. Like if you're like, I'm seriously shopping for a camper. Does this have what I'm looking for? Let's get a couple scary things, potential points of concern out of the way right away. And then if you're just either curious or you are still serious about this one, we're going to dive into a lot more detail. First of all, let's get this right out of the way. This is a 60 by 74 east west bed. This is one of the factors that kind of makes me look at this and say, you know what? I personally think this floor plan would be fantastically suited to uh, solo RVers. Now, if you're a honeymooning little couple, you don't mind being close to one another. Uh, you don't mind sharing that bed space at night if you, uh, you don't mind or you do have to crawl over one another in the evening hours to get to the bathroom. If that still is okay for you, this is going to chop a good chunk of length, weight, and cost off the RV, relatively speaking. Obviously, Winnebago's are not the least expensive brand of camper out there because they pack a lot of big features into that, which naturally affects the price tag. That old phrase, you get what you pay for. Um, the other thing here, this is a step-up slide-out, but they did make it carpetless, which is nice. And I love it when the slide floor matches the main floor. That's uh, my nerd preferred, I think, number 37 thing that I look for in an RV if I'm keeping track. Here's one of the other things that um, is very easily missed and doesn't really show up very well on camera, at least when I'm behind the camera. And that's the fact that this RV has a six four ceiling height so my fingernails up here they're dragging a six four uh six four ceiling now with my hat it's my hats uh you see how my ears are sticking out now like when uh when a little boy wears his dad's big hat you know he's like hey dad can we go to town this is i don't know is that is that the worst look for me i've ever had regardless you get the idea it's a little bit shorter ceiling height in here the thing is though as i said this RV's greatest assets are also its greatest liabilities. It comes in under 3,800 pounds uh, empty, just under, I think, 5,000 pounds on the nose, fully max loaded, and it is smaller, it is lighter, it is towable and accessible by more vehicles than a lot of bigger RVs. But these are the things that it takes to make that happen. And I get that those might be problem factors for you, so I wanted to make sure I zeroed in on those first. And if you're like, okay, well, I just wanna learn more about Winnebago, or hey, I kinda, I'm wondering more about this floor plan. We're gonna dive into a lot more detail here now. And I thought we'd go ahead and flip the script and flip our orientation and look at the RV from the other way. Winnebago is very good about this, putting some big windows where they can, but notice those USB outlets up top in the slide box. Now you might need to get a little bit longer USB cable to make those function, but 
they're doing something. They're trying to give you some function to get over here. Now, this has an easy up-down Dream Dinette system. It's a little bit less of a knee knocker, uh, especially if you're sitting on the uh, seats that are near the end of the slide out. We'll get to see that uh, open in detail in just a minute here. Uh, moving up this direction, just across from the kitchen, you see up top here, you do have a ceiling vent fan. Now that is there due to the fact that this RV has that nice little stove top, but it does not actually have a stove top vent hood. Now that is the smaller four inch fan. If you wanted to upgrade to a bigger fan, those kind of things are, are, are very, very easy to do. And I tell you, you know, I'm a fan of the Marvel Universe and with the way that I've been eating lately here, I'm sure upgrading myself to become a bigger fan. <laughs> anyway, let's get the, uh, let's talk about this too. This is not a, an awesome entertainment center. This is not an entertainment focused camper. I'm not sure I'd even leave the TV in here. I think I might turn that into some kind of storage myself. But if you are totally stuck inside on a rainy day, if I back up, I'm going to sit down, you know, at one of the dinette benches you know, you can kind of see TV from here. If you're watching TV in the evening at night, and I do believe that can pivot around. Let me verify that actually for you so that you can get a little bit better viewing angle on it. While we're doing that, one of the other cool things they have here is a little wireless phone charger, which is actually kind of cool. And that is actually 12 volt power that operates right off your battery. So does this TV pivot? Oh, yes, indeedy doodly it does. Notice too, they're giving us a full viewing window with a privacy shade, which is fantastic over here. And as I uh, back up a little bit more, we've got sealed edge press membrane countertops. And one of the things I just wasn't able to get a good angle on uh, previously is the fact that it does have that little flip up countertop extension there. So if you need uh, some extra, you know, prep space in this otherwise very limited prep space camper, you have it. Um, that is a convection microwave oven. That is standard. And I think that that is really important when we start talking about this kitchen because it does not have a gas oven option. They opted instead to just maximize the dry storage on these. And that's actually one of the things I want to give them a little bit of credit for. Um, you've got, for a small camper this size, about a 1,200-pound uh, a or 1,300-pound cargo capacity is, uh, is not terrible. Now let's look at everything either, you know, closed up, opened up, whatever the case may be. We got that dinette down in sleeper mode function. You see storage below it. There's big storage below the bed. And uh, that, that's true both inside and outside. And it is nice that they still include, uh, include a privacy curtain, even though this is mostly what I call a solo or couples camping model. Now we're looking at the gas electric eight cubic foot two-way refrigerator right here, but there is an option for a 10 point, I think three or seven cubic foot uh, DC compressor fridge that will be, well, that's actually the standard, the two-way fridge that we're looking at. It is actually the optional piece of equipment. So kind of keep that in mind. Again, the one that we're looking at here today might vary significantly from what we uh, you know, have in stock on a given day at any of our ambitious locations because we have Winnebago's at more than just our uh, Coldwater, Michigan store. Um, you, you saw a big stainless farm sink in there. You know, they went with maximum drawer space. Again, no propane oven. That's probably something I should have mentioned earlier when we were talking about the potential deal breakers sort of thing. But, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of dry storage in here. Something else that may not have been obvious. Over here under that stereo head unit, the, the big doors on the right-hand side, that shelf in there was removable. So if you wanted to turn that into like a little coat closet, it's absolutely something you can do. So I think we got the living room and the kitchen and all that pegged. Let's hop back there into that bathroom space. One of the things I noticed when I cracked that door open though, the little, uh, you know, this could either be double towel hook or I'm not sure if that couldn't function as something of like a little broom hanger I, with that, that kind of double, double, I don't know, lifter finger sort of hook. Yeah, double hook. That's all I had to say. I don't know why I felt the need to try to come up with another name for it. Ooh, double hook. Uh, uh. Some people really don't like it when manufacturers leave the top gap open around uh, bathrooms here. I've heard a lot of different explanations for it, but in speaking with actual production managers, the biggest reason most brands don't enclose that is so that the laborers can install the door up or down with a greater variance. So by virtue of the fact that Winnebago is actually framing this door out, they're forcing their laborers to a higher standard of fit and finish, which I think says a lot about what you're getting with this RV. And I will never say, I will never say any RV is perfect, but I, I, I do strongly feel that uh, these, are, these are in that superior kind of fit and finish category. Now it's a small camper. They could not put a big bathroom in this little thing. So the toilet space that you see right there, 
and the shower space that you see right here, they are both pretty tight for somebody of my physicality. So I'm, I'm probably, you know what? I haven't scaled myself lately because frankly, I don't want to see what the numbers say. You ever have one of those moments? But um, I, I bet I'm back in that 200 pound range. I'm in the 190s plus currently for sure. I've, I've packed on a few of those extra pandemic poundages again. But uh, I'm also over six foot tall. So, you know, somebody of my size, this is tight. At the same time though, if I'm like, listen, I've got a tow package pickup or a tow package SUV and I don't want to have to get a half ton, a three quarter ton just to tow a nicely appointed camper. What do you got for me? These are the kind of things that I might say, you know what? I could deal with that. And now with the slide out closed and rambling gamble in road mode, although it does get a little bit tight, you might do the sideways travel trailer two-step boogie to get yourself through here. The fact is though, kitchen, bed, uh, all the storage, basically everything in this, including the bathroom, remains fully travel accessible. I think this one is, it's what I call totally turtle friendly, dude, because this is a turtle that can exist without poking its head out the shell. So back outside, I actually want to begin with the belly of the beast, because I think this is one of the big important factors on these. If you look through here, and maybe I'm not at the best angle, you might notice how that's not the common leaf spring suspension that almost every small trailer tends to run on. Uh, that is the same type of suspension that Rockwood's using, where you've got a, a torsion axle and suspension system, where it's not truly four-wheel independent, but it's it's kind of close, where the wheels do have some measure of independence, and it's just it's going to offer you better ride and handling. And this suspension system basically works the opposite of a leaf spring, and it will try to keep itself flat, so that when you're going around those really tight uh, highway curly Q style exits. It will, um, it, it'll track better. The RV doesn't try to suck you off the road, which is even more important if you are pairing this up with a lighter physical weight, like a lighter curb weight uh, SUV or midsize pickup with a tow package. Something not a lot of people consider is how the weight uh, and the length of the RV fight against the size of the pickup there. Well, my tow rating is, I understand that, but there's still more factors involved in towing than just your tow rating. Now, the underbelly there you saw was enclosed. There's also holding tank heaters and a radiant barrier package standard on these. That's what's kind of cool. For the most part, they kind of just load them up real nice. Got that uh, three-quarter nose cap with the stone guard down below. We are only seven foot wide. So again, you are cutting out a lot of the frontal surface area when you're getting passed by like a big semi. So you don't get that big wind push kind of knocking you halfway off the road. And I tell you what, um, when I visited my sister's stores over in Iowa, I, I discovered what windy towing ki uh, conditions actually look like. I thought I knew what wind was here in Southern Michigan. I did not. It's a totally different animal out there. Now by default up front, You've got 20 pound propane tanks, but they always standardize a 30 pound cover. There's optional 30 pound tanks. So keep that in mind because that cover is, I think sometimes unintentionally misleading. Winnebago's doing that just to get, basically it's easier for them to stock one tank cover that pretty much costs the same instead of two. Now you see that little home plate shaped um, sticker down here in the chassis. What that's telling us is this is running on a different frame. Uh, this is on a Norco chassis, not a not a Lippert chassis right here. So it's not a traditional I-beam. I haven't talked about this much recently, so let's dive into this. It is uh, an aircraft style chassis that is huck bolted together and it's made with HSLA steel, high strength, low alloy. What that basically means is thinner, lighter, but stronger or you probably, uh, you know, equivalents in strength, as it were, versus a, a thicker traditional I-beam. And it's been my experience and uh, that typically brands riding on this chassis seem to have uh, pretty solid service records. And I think it's because the whole thing is not jiggle banging apart going down the road. Now around the corner over here, that is our uh, charge controller. That is a 30 amp charge controller, by the way. And this RV is prepped and ready for the TireLink TPMS system. That's that other little black plug next to that uh, light up there. But notice, so they give us big baggage doors on both sides of a full true pass-through. But because it's an east-west bed, they had the room to dog leg left it over here a little bit. And that over there is a normally big pass-through compartment door that just feels like it's been dwarfed over here by this big honking monster. Now look in the bottom left corner of the screen. You see those two black switches? Those are uh, the left and right switches for the front power stabilizer jacks. That's another really crazy thing on this little trailer. 
Power stabilizer jacks are standard on these and they each have their own button. They don't scissor down together, which is kind of cool. You see right there, you've got the propane cooker hooker coming off the side in case you feel like firing up the grill or the griddle or anything like that, or just turning it into a flamethrower, which I obviously really do not recommend. Um, <laughs> Goodyear uh, Wranglers. Uh, so they, these are 87 mile an hour rated American made tires. You see that galvanized uh, steel wheel well guard up there. Even a, a great Goodyear tire. A lot of people, I, I think that there's been this impression that Goodyears are bulletproof and Goodyears can't possibly go flat or get punctured. Road debris can puncture anything. It's just a lot less likely on a good tire like this. Uh, so that little steel, galvanized steel wheel well, it might be something that just helps shield the RV before that belted radial just starts really bashing up the inside of things. Outside TV hookup, high pressure cold water sprayer port over here, or higher pressure versus a traditional outside uh, camp shower. So kind of keep that in mind. Now I mentioned that those switches were for the front jacks. Every power stabilizer has its own individual button. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because once again, that is exceptionally uncommon within the RV industry. Now, as I back up here, look down at the bumper if you would, please. And the fact that there's both a bumper and a two inch receiver hitch on the back for things like bike racks or whatnot. Once again, an incredibly uncommon quality. Now, it, let me, let, hold on. I'm gonna go back to the right here. Small awning, let's just get that out of the way. Again, I'm trying to be fair. I'm calling the good with the bad. That awning, it's, a, it's only like a 10-foot awning, but it's a small RV that put massive windows on both sides of the bed. There's only so much sidewall room that was available. And again, trying to, this thing weighs less than 3,800 pounds dry weight. Something had to give. And unfortunately, a little bit of that awning space was one of the, uh, the things that had to be sacrificed. It does have reverse travel lighting for some cool little safety factors, which I think is kind of nice. But look at like all the hookups back here all in one kind of condensed spot and in the most park friendly arrangement on the RV, uh, like your, your outside uh, utility shower, hot, cold, your black tank flush, all of it located in one spot. And because it does ride on that lifted package, you have some excellent uh, you know clearance for our sewer stuff right here, the stink pickle deployment center, uh, which is the technical term for that in case you were not aware. Now, I'm not blind to the fact that it's like right next to this tire, and that aggressive tread on that tire, it just, it looks dangerous next to that uh, that outlet right there. I don't know, maybe you wanna add a mud flap to it. If you're going to do off pavement camping, maybe that's a little thing you wanna add to this. I can acknowledge that. But I also want to acknowledge this. What other little trailer like this has taken the time to, uh, to, to put the gate valves on the inside of a heated, enclosed, protected underbelly? Standard. And there's not a lot of RVs that do that. Now, I haven't seen where Winnebago's actually attempted zero degree testing or what people might refer to as four seasons. Um, I think the only thing that might limit that function on this RV is it doesn't have the world's biggest furnace, but it's a tiny camper. So short of Arctic Tundra camping, I'm estimating, and this is an estimation, that you're gonna be fine. Now let's take a look up at that roof right there. I'm gonna try to spin you around like a record baby, nice and slow. Um, you see, uh, you know, fully walkable roof, ladder up to the roof. Factory standard 190 watt solar package, but you can also get the mini flex version of this that will double that and change a lot of the equipment on this to be more like off pavement, off grid friendly. One of the only sort of off grid hiccups that this one has, cause the size, the tire packages and stuff is nice for getting off paved roads a little bit, but because it is so small, there's just not massive room in the belly for some really big holding tanks. So again, trying to be fair, trying to show you the good with the bad, trying to tell you everything you need to know before you go spending a lot of hard earned American greenbacks on this thing. And if you're a Canadian client or from another country, remember we can always convert your currency into hard earned American greenbacks. And then, you know, convert that currency into a Winnebago Micro Mini from Bish's RV. We can help with the conversion process. That's what I'm getting at. So let me know what you think of this guy. I get that things like that east-west bed, the, the sometimes more confined, smaller bathroom might be a point of a concern for you, but I think it's one of those kind of somewhat necessary evils to get an RV down into that lighter weight range that might work for you. So I don't think this is gonna work for everybody. But again, I think that there's a lot of people like, I've just been trying to find something for myself to go around on the weekend, and I want a good, classy camper. I think that's where this one comes into play really nicely here. But that's my two cents. Let me know what you think. 
And again, if you appreciate how we show you the good with the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you next time. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.